Well, good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship. And I will say a special word of welcome. There's many of y'all in the sanctuary this morning that is especially glad to see you back uh, for the first time or for the first time in a while. Um, and we are so glad to have you here. Um, and also for those gathered online, we are glad you're with us too. You're welcome to throw up some emojis or text a friend. In fact, do me a favor. For those here in the sanctuary, look around and wave and just greet one another with a moment of joy. I should record this because that's just such a happy moment at the service each time. So we have several announcements and so I'm going to move pretty quickly this morning and we've got slides up on the screen. We'll put them on the, the website and Facebook as well. Um, but if you're interested, next Sunday between worship services, our lay leader, Tim, in fact, Tim is right here. Hello, Tim. Uh, he'll be doing, he'll be leading a church tour. So if you want to know more about where things are here at the campus, if you've never seen the chapel or you want to see the nursery or Margaret's memories room, um, Tim will be at the welcome table between services next Sunday at 10 o'clock. Um, also, if you want to stick around today, we have a very, very informal, very, very last minute. We've got a crock pot of soup um, and some salad. If anybody wants to stick around and hear a little bit more about the church and church mission um, and talk about church membership. Um, but we also have next Sunday, if you haven't already marked your calendars, next Sunday at four o'clock is a memorial concert honoring Dan Franco Bandiero. The music will be fantastic. The to-go snacks at the end are promised to be absolutely delicious. Um, and Dan is a very special person um, to me and to the church. And so we encourage you to come and check out that concert next Sunday. The Tuesday afterwards, and this is, we've got a lot going on that particular week. Tuesday, November 16th at 7 o'clock is an online-only Zoom call church conference. Participating members can log on to that online meeting and vote on lay leadership for next year, the clergy compensation form, um, and the membership audit. Um, so that is an online meeting that Tuesday. But then Thursday of that same week, here in the sanctuary in person, if you would like to participate online, there will be like a, a, a login online only Zoom, excuse me, let me rephrase that, a view only online option, but the gathering will be here in the sanctuary that Thursday at 6.30. The bishop's assistant, Reverend Alex Shanks, will be here to give an informational presentation about the upcoming general conference that is scheduled for August of next year. He'll be answering questions about the protocol of peace uh, grace and peace through separation. Um, and if you can't make that meeting that Thursday, there is like a January overflow date. We just want to make sure as a church that y'all have the information. Um, so that's that Thursday in person. But then that Saturday, we are going to have a bonfire night. Hopefully the weather will be drier than it was last night, but still very cool. Um, and bonfire is kind of a loose term. Full disclosure, we will have fire pits. Um, but we will also have marshmallows. And if you do not have children but love playing with fire, we definitely need some adults to just kind of be around to make sure that the fires are working and the children are not in the fires. Uh, so we want this to be an intergenerational gathering, um, just a nice time for community. So if you want to bring a lawn chair, um, that, will, that will be happening out here in the church's courtyard. And then the next Sunday, the next day, November 21st, is Christ the King Sunday. So for worship, it'll be a, a special service of glory and honor to God. And also, right after that worship service, we're going to order pizza and play some Christmas music and hang the greens. So if you'd like to stick around after worship, the traditional service on the 21st, we'll be putting up wreaths and putting up the gigantic Christmas tree. Um, and we, we would love, love, love some extra hands to help out. So, I know that's a lot going on, and so I'm going to invite you. There's a, there is a connection between church life and Sunday worship, but for now, do me a favor, take a breath. Let's be present this morning where we honor and remember Christ who is present to grant peace and remembrance.
God has called us like Moses in the wilderness, like the prophets in the hills and the disciples in the cities. They shared their blessing so that we might know God's presence here. We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. Let us run with perseverance in the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Amen. Please join me in our affirmation of faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> church doing a wave and be scary yep there we go hi reese coming up come on dj when i see a very sparkly diana good morning all right if you are a kid and you're worshiping with us online throw some some of your favorite emojis we want to see those up on the screen to show that you're with us this morning too hey guys all right all right so all right everybody warm enough so far doing okay surviving the weekend i know this is not florida weather are you are y'all from Florida? Okay, all right. So you're like this is not my weather either. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, this morning is a special Sunday in the church. Do you guys see those candelabra things that we have right there? And we don't typically have those. I know. Surprise, surprise. We don't have a million candles every single Sunday. Um, anybody know what those are for? All Saints Sunday. Yeah, we've got a cool picture. All Saints. Sunday. What do you think All Saints Sunday is? Okay, she says so some people that like helped in the church and then passed away. For the record, that's not always what happens every time you help in the church. But yes, absolutely. Like there is a, um, for folks that are part of the church and are still part of the church, even though they've passed away. What were you going to say, DJ? You were going to say it like it's, it's the Sunday we sing for all the saints. And when the saints go marching in, we sing a bunch of really good saint songs. Yeah. Do you guys know? Oh, when Papa directs. You're right. He does. Papa does direct the choir on All Saints Sunday. His Papa is the choir director, for those who don't know. Uh, absolutely. And this morning, we remember some very special stuff. We remember that God is with the folks who pass away, right? That's part of our story is the story of Jesus. Jesus also who 
died. So we know when folks die, Jesus is right there with them. And then Jesus died, and then what happened three days later? He rose back up. He rose back up, and what's that called? He rose again, and the churchy word for that starts with an R. It's called res resurrection. That's right. So because we follow Jesus in life, if we follow Jesus in death, that means we also get to follow Jesus in resurrection, right? Right. Even we will follow Jesus even into the hope of heaven. And that's part of what we remember this morning is we're going to, in just a minute, we're going to read a bunch of names. We're going to read names of people who were members of this church and passed away. And then we're going to remember, we're going to read a bunch of names of friends and family, folks that may not have been members, and yet we still believe that God loves them and is holding them still too. Um, and so we're going to have, church, will you do me a favor? I've got a scripture from Revelation. Church, will you read this together? This is our hope this morning that we're trusting in, that God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. That's from Revelation 21. Now, it's still okay. I think sometimes when we miss loved ones who have passed away, we are allowed to be sad. And I think part of what we remember this morning is that God holds us in that sadness. Yeah, your mom is sad when your granny passed away. I absolutely. And she's in heaven, and we celebrate that. And so however you're feeling this morning, whether you're sad over a loss, whether you're celebrating the resurrection of heaven, it's important to remember those who have gone before. So we're gonna, I'm gonna give you guys something special. We've got some names up there on the altar. And so here's what I want you guys to do. I'm gonna give you guys each a heart with shiny gold stuff on it. And I want you to just take a second and think of somebody, maybe their name is being read this morning, maybe not, maybe they passed away a long time ago. I just want you to think of somebody that touched your life that maybe passed away, or maybe it was somebody from a really, really long time ago, um, like that you'd never even met, um, but somebody that may be in the communion of saints. And when you think about it, I want you, you're welcome to go ahead and walk on up and put that heart up there on the altar as a sign that you remember them. Whenever you're ready, go ahead. We don't have pens, so we're not going to write on them right now, but you can write on them in your heart and in your prayers. Here we go. You're going to have one. And then, after we read the names, we are going to light a bunch of candles. And you guys, in your pews and in your spots where you're sitting, oh, you've got one, you are welcome to kind of turn these on and hold these and even take them home after worship to remember, okay? You guys ready to pray? All right, let's pray for our hearts to be open to remember this morning. Are you ready? All right, we do like a repeat after me kind of prayer, okay? Repeat after me, you ready? Ready, pray. Dear God, thank you for hope. Thank you for comfort for those who grieve. May you wipe tears for all who are sad. May you make a way for hope and life eternal that as we remember, we trust in you. We love you, Jesus. Amen. All right, y'all are welcome to go ahead and go back to your seats as we are getting ready to do a moment of remembrance of all the saints. At this time, I'm going to invite if Tim Bush will come forward and Joanne Goodwin to light our candles and read our names. And we have those in the bell choir who will be ringing in the saints again to remember those who have gone before. As we get ready, though, I will take a moment just as a special, a special moment. Um, for those in the church who, who are fans of Earl Carlson, who is an alligator hunter and a knife maker and an incredible person, um, I, I share the sad news that he passed away early yesterday morning. 
Um, and so, especially since it's All Saints, we wanted to include him and also just give a special moment. So if you will join me for just a moment of silence um, to thank God for Earl and to pray for his wife, Joanne. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, as we gather hearts this morning, may you open us that as these names are read, so too your comfort may come to all who love them. As we remember those who have gone before us, may you hold them in the light of your peace and remembrance, and that you would be with us in this time this morning. In Christ we pray. Amen. So in the hope of Christ and strength of resurrection, we remember these faithful and beloved members of Riverside Park United Methodist Church who have passed away this year. We remember Earl Cross. Dan Fran Cabandiero. Ruth Jacobs. Geneva Rents. Connie Stone Skinner. We also remember these families and the friends who have passed away this season. We remember the mass. Richard Allen. Lee Franklin. Mike Brazell. Robert Brazell. Wanda Brazell. Leon Brown. Sherry Diana Coffin. Jack Herb. Doc Fitzpatrick. Steve Glarus. Charles Glarus. Tommy Missouri. Paul M. Hess Jr. Calvin Theodore King. Jonathan King. Cynthia W. Lewis. Pamela Marie Morris. Karen Lewis. Catherine O'Shea. Maddie Paxton. Jim Pickering. Roxanne Martina Reyes. Bonnie Jane Rayburn. Jacqueline Miller. Vincent Anthony Santa Lucia. James Sherfield Morrison. Stacey Shields. Anita Smith. Mary Stephen. Lisa Ann Taylor. Charles Bowen. Debbie Weiss. Gary Winter. Alpha and Omega. You are the life and the resurrection. And so we pray for each and every name listed here. We thank you for their lives and the ways that they have blessed us. And Lord, we ask that you would acknowledge them in your own kingdom as your children, as the sheep of your fold and as sinners of your own redeeming. Lord, in the faith of Christ, we ask that your perpetual light would shine on them and that you would give them peace. 
And so too, for those gathered here, for those who love them and miss them and grieve them, Lord, we lean on your promises, that you promise that those who grieve are blessed because they will be comforted, that you promise to be near to the brokenhearted, and that you, you, Jesus Christ, you even wept at the tomb of your friend Lazarus. And so we know that you know what it is to grieve. And so for those who are grieving, may you send your Holy Spirit of comfort and strength and peace. May you send church and community in gifts of quiet moments together, in gifts of casseroles or cards, or simply the act of remembrance like this this morning where we know we do not remember alone. And even in remembrance, Lord, as tears are shed, we ask that you would wipe those tears, not in a pretending that it doesn't hurt, but rather in an acknowledgement that hope is still coming that your story is one of eternity. And so, Lord Christ, may you hold us in the comfort that comes through grief and also in the hope of resurrection and light and life. Lord, for the, the ways that we grieve on a daily basis, Lord, may you hold this too. For all of the ways that these folks continue in our lives to make us who we are, we give you thanks. And we thank you, Lord, for the communion of saints that surrounds us on a daily basis and for this opportunity to remember and be lifted and connected once again. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, this day and ever. So hear us, Lord, as we pray, as we remember, and as we echo the very words that you taught us, joining voices and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As we shift to a moment of offering, um, so too we continue to offer up names and prayers to God and offerings of comfort for one another. Um, and I would just gently bring your attention, there's a bulletin insert. Um, this is the, the time of year when the Finance Committee begins to think about our missions and ministries for 2022. Um, and we are in a season where I'm excited and hopeful of rebuilding and reaching out to our community and our neighbors for 2022 as well. And so we simply invite you to be, to be in prayer for the ways God is calling you to participate in those missions and ministries as well. And so on Thanksgiving Sunday, Christ the King Sunday, um, we'll be lifting up pledge cards and mission promises um, as an act of worship and glory to God as well. Um, but here and now, let us give to God with thankful hearts um, and joyful spirits.
Lord, we thank you for those who have gone before, and we thank you for these gifts and offerings that are lifted up to you now. May you bless them and use them to build your kingdom here on earth and as it is in heaven. Lord, that we may continue to carry your story forward for others who need to hear it now. In Jesus we pray. Amen. and beauty um, in, in remembering those who have gone before us, remembering our own roots. Um, there's something beautiful about symbolizing life and life eternal through candles and that collective image, like one candle alone would be pretty. But when you see all of these names gathered, and again, when you sit and you really consider the communion of saints of all time and all folks gathered, uh, as a sign of praise and glory to God, again, there is hope and there is strength and there is comfort in that. So I invite you as we read, um, we'll be reading a, a litany from Hebrews 11. Um, hear now the word of God. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. 
The act of faith is what distinguished our ancestors and set them apart from the crowd. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice. By faith, Noah built an ark to save his household. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he and Sarah, who was barren, received descendants as many as the stars of heaven. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. And by faith, Isaac invoked blessings for the future of Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph. By faith, Moses was hidden by his parents for three months after his birth. By faith, he left Egypt. By faith, he kept the Passover. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. And by faith, Rahab the prostitute received the Hebrew spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail to tell me of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection, and others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. And so therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I gathered at a, a, a church one, one year for All Saints Sunday, and they had a prayer station set up. And part of this prayer station, it, wasn't, it was partially remembering names of folks that have gone before us that we know. Um, but this one even went further back, and they had many of the names I read just now. You know, it was, it listed Abel, and it listed Noah, and Abraham, and Sarah, and Isaac. It listed Mary, and Elizabeth. Um, and then even beyond the biblical names, like they listed some of the very early, early folks we look to as saints. You know, pretty much all of the faces you see in the stained glass windows around us. Uh, these are the folks that have been part of God's story. And so this listing of saints, it was beautifully written. It had all of these epic names. It included St. Augustine. It included... Um, and included St. Francis. It included uh, the Martin Luther and John Wesley and the folks that led the early Protestant Reformation and the folks that led the early Methodist movement. It included even, even saints from the past hundred years. It included names like Mother Teresa and it included names like Martin Luther King Jr. It listed these heroes that lived by faith, lived out their faith, and it was powerful to read them. And then they had markers and invited you to write your own name on that same wall. It was incredibly humbling because I'll be honest, my first reaction was absolutely not. My name is not nearly, I mean, like, I cannot put my name beside Mother Teresa in all good conscience. Like, that's just not fair or okay. And yet, as we gather and we read the names of folks from this past year, as we remember that not a single one of us is part of the saints because we in our own actions are perfect or holy or awesome, but rather what makes us saintly, what makes us holy, what gives us that hope of eternal resurrection is not to do with our work, but entirely to do with God and God's grace. The mercy that God pours out, the forgiveness that God offers, the very fact that Jesus opens the gates of heaven and makes a way out of death and into resurrected life is powerful and it's comforting and it's good and it's glorious. And so too, as we remember these loved ones this morning, especially for those who are in the midst of grief, it's comforting to know that these same loved ones have hope of heaven 
Again, not because of anything they particularly did or any glorious, because we could, again, in addition to the, the, the saints and the, the things read here from Hebrews, like we could talk about the church members' names that have been lifted up. We could talk about the wonderful things that they have done in this community for the ways that they have gone before to make us who we are, to make this church the example it is, is in the community. And also, each and every one of those people point us to the goodness and glory of God. And there's strength in that, in knowing that they nudge us just a little bit back into the, into the grace of God, that they pull us into this wide and greater story of Jesus. Because part of the power that we proclaim is, yes, it is good in the midst of grief to hold on to resurrection. Yes, in the midst of grief, it is good to know that God is right there with us, holding that holy handkerchief and wiping away tears. It is good to know that when days get hard, there is a, a gift of the communion of saints. And also, it's powerful and good to know that the same God who worked in their lives, the same God that by faith allowed them to do wondrous things, is the same God that allows us to live our days by faith too. Because you see, the same God of power and might and resurrection is the same God that is with us too. And sometimes it is the communion of saints that nudges us into that strength and courage. I had a, I had a, um, a couple moments this week. I mean, you, can, you could call it a no bones day. You could also just call it a really d tough or difficult day. Um, but I had a morning where I woke up and I said, boy, I just, I don't know if I, I don't know if I can do what the day ahead has for me. I don't know if I want to do what the day has for me. Um, and it was a, a, you know, one of those mornings where my toddler was just like, not wanting to do anything whatsoever. Um, and so we stumbled out of the house. I victoriously got her into her car seat. Both of us were wearing pants. And so at minimum, we were doing okay. And it was just one of those where I'm like, okay, it's a struggle moment. And then I looked and I realized that the coffee mug that I had grabbed out of the cabinet was a mug that used to belong to my dad. And if you don't know my story, my, my dad passed away when I was about 12. And so whenever we remember the communion of saints, like there's always a moment where I'm like, all right, and I am my, my daddy's daughter and I give thanks to God. Um, and then it, not only was I wearing, or not only was I holding this mug from my dad, but I realized in that moment that I was wearing a necklace um, that a previous church member at a previous church had given me who had passed away last year. And then in that same moment, I realized, in fact, I'm wearing the earrings right now, a, a, a earrings that another church member from another church had given me. And so just in this one little moment, it was this just like, whew, I was wearing and holding and surrounded by this like tiny, tiny moment of the communion of saints. And so part of what we proclaim in remembering those that have died, we remember the hope of resurrection through Jesus Christ. And we remember that we are stronger, we are better because of the folks who have been in our lives. There is strength in remembering the communion of saints. We give thanks to God for them. And two, if you, maybe your story this morning is, boy, I, I don't have loved ones that have passed away in the last year, or, you know, I just don't even have strong enough relationships, I feel disconnected then let me tell you that your communion of saints is broader still. You, as a child of God, you stand in the same line as, and I keep saying Mother Teresa, but you get the image. You stand in line with those who have gone before you, who by faith lived their life. So too, by faith, you can have the strength and courage to get through whatever each day has for you. And so especially on days that are hard or dark or weary, May the hope and strength of Jesus Christ by faith, may you know that you can do hard things. May you be granted the strength and courage because you stand in line with those who have gone before. May that give you strength and courage to do hard things, to process through grief one day at a time, or to conquer obstacles one day at a time. Brothers and sisters, we stand at the edge. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. We are at the tail end of a line that marches and stands before God that has been there for generations and generations long before us. And so glory be to God. Thanks be to God for that strength that is ours and yours each and every day. Amen. We're going to celebrate communion.
And communion, again, is this time where we come and we remember, remember what Christ has done, um, and remember God's grace. Um, and so, too, we believe that this table, this communion table, it's not owned, it's not United Methodist, it's not Riverside Parks, it has nothing to do with Jacksonville, and has everything to do with the kingdom of God. Um, so one piece that I want you to just be mindful and hopeful of is there's a, in Celtic spirituality, they talk about holy places or holy moments is where the veil between this world and heaven grows very thin. And so part of our hope is that in communion, we remember those who have gone before and they gather and worship with us at this very same table. So as we break bread and as we share in the resurrection and death of Jesus Christ, so too are those who followed Christ in life and resurrection, so too are they with us. I'm gonna invite you to join in a, a prayer, uh, a prayer of confession. And I would remind you that Christ invites all who love him, all who repent of their sin and seek to live at peace with one another. So let us confess our sin before God. Our sin before God. We confess that we have failed to be in obedience. We have not done your love. We have broken your love. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not loved the cry of me. So forgive us, and free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And brothers and sisters, hear the good news that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And Christ was resurrected so that forgiveness can be offered, so that proves God's love for us. And so in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name, in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. And now I invite you to lift your hearts, and so I say, may the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All right, let's try that again. Let's give our thanks, let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right. And it's a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Even in the midst of grief, we give you thanks and know that you are the God of the apostles and martyrs, God of our mothers and fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. And so we say, holy, 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 Lord God of power and might. Here, repeat after me. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, Lord God, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night before he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke that bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, he gave thanks to you, mighty God, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, the mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we too offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice to God. And so in union with Christ's offering for us, we proclaim the mystery of faith, saying Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen, Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. At this time, I invite you um, to go ahead and lift your communion elements. If you've already imbibed them, then God can still bless what is in the belly. Um, but if you want to take a second, we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to pour out. I'm going to open mine slightly. Let's lift and pray. Holy Spirit of resurrection and power and comfort, we pray that you would bless these elements. 
remind us of Christ's sacrifice that made a way for eternal life, that too makes space for all of heaven to be at life with us here. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until you come in final victory and we all feast at your glorious banquet together. Lord God, may you bless these elements that we may be forgiven and set free and part of your mission and ministry. In Christ Jesus we pray, amen. Brothers and sisters, this is the body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of sins and the hope of resurrection. Amen. God, we give you thanks for the ways that your mysteries are poured out. Your hope is poured out. Your strength and comfort are poured out. And so too, Lord, as your grace is in us, may we live graciously and serve mercifully and love abundantly in your name. Amen.